In this video, I'll show you how I made a Bluetooth Low Energy Connected scale that also has an app that does graphing, charting, and data logging, as well as data export into CSV files so that you can analyze your data in some other program. So the scale that I built in the previous video, I was always just kind of really disappointed with the enclosure because it's just kind of ratty and 3D printed. And so I'd really like to have something more similar to the scale that I normally use, which is this uh, greater good scale. And so that's what I did. I ended up actually using this scale in this project. Now, among the things that this allowed me to do is stuff like uh, retain the battery door, where I've got a 1000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. I was also able to retain the function of all the buttons, so I can tear, I can switch between grams and ounces, and I have a key that will also put the module into deep sleep. So, like I said, I use this Greater Goods Pocket Scale, and these are really great because they're super tiny. They're very, very slim, and on my espresso machine, uh, that's necessary because I don't have a lot of deck height and I don't like big bulky scales. So um, I did abuse this thing a bit. I had to get it open, which involved also prying the platform off. Uh, these platforms are actually one of the hardest pieces to get a hold of. You can't really buy those. So you can buy load cells, but you can't get the platform. And that's actually one of the advantages of buying one of these pre-made little scales. Um, so this platform just held on by a uh, couple pieces of double-sided tape. And then I was able to unscrew the rest of the housing and pry this thing open without damaging any of the case. So here's a good shot of the internals, just in case you'd like to know what the default state of the inside of this scale looks like. Uh, so I pulled up the, the main board here, and you can see it's uh, just a microcontroller that's been epoxied over. And then we've got a seven segment LCD panel, and the buttons are integrated onto the PCB. Uh, here's a good couple of still shots, just in case anybody wants a good look at the PCB, front and the back. Um, as you can see, these buttons there. So next up, I had to desolder all the connections because I did want to reuse some of the components. Um, I also needed to do some surgery on the battery compartment so that I could fit the 1000 milliamp hour rechargeable lithium polymer battery. So it, it took quite a bit of fiddling. Eventually I even had to use a chisel to clean up some of the, uh, the extra strengthening and reinforcing and I had to knock out a little hole so that I could get the, uh, the battery cable inside the apartment. But eventually I was able to get that battery to fit and as you can see, uh, it does fit perfectly. Next up, I had to find spaces for all the components where again, I had to trim out some little bits and then I had to face how I was gonna keep these buttons because I did want to replace the screen. Now on these buttons, there is a little alignment hole on the PCB and there are a couple of screws for mounting this thing. So what I needed to do was a bit of PCB surgery. Okay, so avert the eyes of the children it's not really something that I always recommend, but it is worth noting that, you know, PCBs are just suggestions. You know, you can reuse them any way you really want. So since I wasn't using the rest of that stuff, I just trimmed the PCB down and then I was able to use its built-in mounting mechanism. And now all the buttons, well, they still work perfectly. Um, I did have to rewire them, but that's pretty easy. So next up, because I'm using a battery, I did have to solder in uh, the battery connections to the bottom of the Zhao. I am again using the ESP32 seed Zhao, and once I got the battery installed, I just did a quick check to make sure, yep, we are getting 3.3 uh, volts. There it is, so no problems there. The battery seems to be working. Now, next up was the work for the display, and fair warning, uh, this is gonna get a little grotesque. Um, because, you know, the built-in display, that's fine, but again, I wanted this one. And that don't fit. But we're going to make it fit. Believe it or not, you can shrink LCD panels. Yep, so uh, here we're doing some more surgery. Again, PCBs, they are mere suggestions. Uh, I was able to map out where all the connections needed to go, and I had to remove this ribbon cable, trim some things down with a grinder, 
uh, re-solder the, the ribbon cable, and then do some surgery inside the uh, the case. And in the middle of this, I ended up breaking the LCD panel. So I ended up having to redo this whole process with the other OLED display, because I did buy a pack of two, which was handy. And here you can see the connections for the signal traces at the top and the ground and power there at the bottom going into a little voltage regulator. So after that, I got it all mounted up and hot glued it into place and finished wiring up all the internals uh, the load cell and everything into the Zhao, which I had cut out uh, a little area for the USB to exit and hot glued everything into place and it all looked great up to this point. Um, and that's when I realized that all the wires were too fat and I actually had to completely redo all the wiring. In addition, um, I found out that the Zhao does not have built-in battery monitoring, so I added a voltage divider to the power leads. And because I thought there was a problem with the internal pull-down resistors, I added a 10K to one of the pins that controls the sleep button. That ended up not being necessary, but it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, this is the final wiring job and the layout inside of the case, and I was able to get it all back together and add a new piece of double-sided tape and remount the platform so that now I have basically a fully functioning scale. And while I don't have the uh, 360 little spinny thing for the big reveal, uh, here you go. Here's the, you know, handheld 360 grand reveal. Uh, yeah, again, I got to get one of those little spinny platter things that everybody uses. Um, but it looks basically the same. The only tell is the uh, external USB-C port. Next up, we've got coding, and I'm not going to go into detail. The only significant things in the Arduino side was adding the deep sleep function. Pay special attention to that delay because that is definitely necessary. And the battery level monitor, which I just kind of took a table off the internet and built a function to do the voltage monitoring internal to the software reading through that pin. Uh, then we're into the MIT App Inventor, and oh boy, was there a lot of code in there, which again, I'm not going to bore you with. I'll make another video on that. The entire set of uh, app software went through multiple revisions to try to get everything to work because I added a significant number of features, including the ability to load and write to external files. Um, I tried to use GPT to help me out with this. It was of limited use, so most of this was just me. And so here she is. Isn't she beautiful? Again, now the, the power button is now wired to trigger the deep sleep state. And so that puts the unit to deep sleep and then brings it back up, which it does have a little bit of boot time, but no problem there. I've wired the units to trigger back and forth between grams and ounces. Um, I've got a pretty heavy debounce on that, so sometimes you do have to push it rather deliberately because it was flipping way too much before I debounced it. And then you've got the tear function, which is, you know, pretty boring. It's, you know, it just tears, but it does work, so that's important. I've also got a battery percentage up there at the top and a little indicator on whether or not you've got BLE connection. Along with the USB-C, uh, that's the case. And because this is using the original mounts in a much better design, um, this unit has no problems with where you put the weight on the scale. It is pretty darn accurate once I got it all calibrated in, um, no matter where you put the weight. So here's the app, and I did manage to include an actual icon this time. Uh, you load it up, you scan, and then select the BLE device that you want to connect to, and then you go into the logger. Now, inside the logger, if you want to record, um, you probably, if you want to save your data, um, you want to type in uh, some names. If you want to save to a file, you need to type in a file name. If you want to save just an internal series, because each series is recorded as a whole, uh, you can type in individual series names for each weight series that you want to record. So I'm typing in a file name here that I'm just going to call logger, um, and then I'm going to type in a name for this data series, and I'm just going to call this, I don't know, hot garbage, because so far that's kind of what this project has been. Um, and after that, then you can just hit the start logging, and it will record a data series with the name hot garbage like this. And as you can see, you get real-time monitoring on the chart. Um, that is set to record once every 250 milliseconds, and so four times a second you get readings into the chart. If you would like to record another data series, you just change the name, uh, start logging again, and now you've got another data series in there. 
Um, now, at that point, if you want to go back and review what you've done, you can click Load Internal, which loads up the internal data sets, and then select whatever series you want from your internal data, and it will populate it back into the chart um, so that you can review all the stuff that is currently loaded, and if you want to clear it, you can clear it. Now, um, I actually developed the app for a very up-to-date version of Android software, and my old phone doesn't quite work with the read and write external because they've changed permissions. But just to show you, here it is on my newer phone, um, just showing you that the load in data does work. Um, you just need the right Android version. Uh, but since I use this to record, um, I couldn't do it at the time. So here you can see I just load in a file and yeah, it just pulls up the data um, from that file, no problem. Um, so everything works and I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, that's what I built, and I will make another video to go over all the code, but if you have any comments or any feedback, you know, just feel free to leave a comment below, and I will respond whenever I can.